Hello, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to today's episode of the Martinez Love Legal Lounge. Um, my name is Kristen Martinez. I am one of the owners of Martinez Love and I host these weekly episodes of the Martinez Love Legal Lounge every single Monday right here on Facebook Live at 12 o'clock. The purpose of these is just to provide for you an informal, no pressure forum for real estate professionals, members of the community to join, come chat with me and ask me your legal questions. Um, a lot of times we have questions pop up that you're not really sure how to handle or maybe you're just curious, nothing that really warrants a formal um, consultation with me, but again, you'd like to know the answer, you're curious about it or you're not sure how to proceed. This is the perfect forum for you to do just that. So I'm here to give you all of the legal information and knowledge that I have to help you out. Um, if you are here, go ahead and say hello in the comments. I would love to acknowledge you. Also, as you have those questions, make sure to go ahead and put those down in the comments below and I will be addressing those very, very shortly. Um, a little bit about my law firm. We were founded back in 2015 as a full, full service real estate law firm. So we handle transactional issues, contract issues, lease issues. Also a big part of my job is litigation and disputes. And so part of the purpose of these episodes and all of the free information that I provide throughout all of our channels um, is to help keep you out of disputes, help to avoid that litigation piece of it. It's not fun for anybody. Um, you know, there's a joke that said that, you know, the only parties who benefit from litigation are the lawyers. And, you know, it's not a joke because it's the truth. Um, even the party that wins at the end of the day usually has spent months, sometimes years, you know, missing work, dealing with lawyers, dealing with court, stressing out, um, paying attorney's fees. Um, so even that win at the end of the day doesn't feel too great in most cases. So um, let's get your questions answered. Let's keep you out of these disputes. Um, let's keep you protected. Um, as I said, as you have questions, go ahead and put those in the comments and I will be addressing those very, very shortly. Um, a couple of announcements as far as what's going on with us. As you know from the last couple of e uh, episodes, we are newly on TikTok. Um, we're having a lot of fun over there. We're posting a lot of videos that are not available on any other of our other social media channels. So go ahead and check us out there. We are at Martinez Love Law over on TikTok. Um, also, if you've been following us for some time, you know that we are moving. We are currently renovating a new office space over in Lutz. We are super excited about it. Um, and we finally have a plan for moving and a timeline for that. So we plan to be fully operational, operational from our new location um, by the end of this month. So very excited about that. Keep, um, keep checking in for updates and we will be releasing our new address in a couple of weeks as well. Um, lastly, our monthly events, Get Real with Attorney Martinez. I host those every single month, the first Wednesday of the month at 1030, both by Zoom and in person. The next one will be on October 6th at 1030. And our topic is going to be the top five mistakes that realtors make when completing the FAR bar contracts. Um, yes, it's shocking, I know, but sometimes realtors make mistakes and I wanna help you avoid those mistakes and protect both yourselves and your clients. So make sure to re reach out to us for the registration link for that one. Again, thank you so much for everyone who is joining us today. Make sure to say hello in the comments. Make sure to go ahead and post your comments down in the, um, your questions down in the comments. I would love to address those. Um, in the meantime, I will go ahead. I was sent two questions throughout the week that um, I kind of tabled and said I would address here on our Facebook Live. So I'm going to go ahead and address those. But as you have comments or questions, make sure to go ahead and post those down below. I'll be happy to answer those live. So the first one I got, and if you have listened to any of my videos, attended my events, you probably know I'm not a huge fan of using standard form contracts. I would expect that opinion is um, very common in the legal community and, and, and with lawyers, but um, the question I got this week was, why not? You know, what is wrong with me using a standard form contract, whether it be a lease or otherwise? And I'll, I'll kind of preface the conversation with, 
I'm not really talking about the standard FARBAR contract for residential purchase and sale transactions. That is such a widely used contract, and for most transactions, it works. Um, not all, um, but with the different addenda that are available, or even with a customized addendum to fit your situation or your unique cir circumstances, um, that is a solid contract to use. I am more talking about you know, standard contracts people will find for lease agreements or powers of attorney or joint venture agreements, things like that um, that should really be customized to the situation. That also stands true for any sort of, sort of commercial real estate transaction, whether it be a purchase and sale or a leasing situation. So what is wrong with standard contracts? Um, there is nothing wrong per se, and I'm obviously addressing standard contracts in general. Um, some obviously are a lot worse than others, um, but just in general, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. So with standard contracts, the contracts are not drafted with your best interests in mind. The contract is draft are, is typically going to be drafted in a neutral manner, meaning that it protects both parties equally. When you're entering into a contract, that is not what you want. You want to sign a contract that is going to protect you, that is going to accomplish your goals, and that is going to be in line with what your interests are in a transaction. So when I'm hired to either prepare a contract or review a contract on behalf of the client, I can't just spit out, you know, say, hey, I'm going to lease out a property, give me a lease. I can't just spit out a lease. I need to know who am I protecting? Am I representing the landlord? Okay, that's going to be a very different lease than if I'm protecting the tenant. Um, so you want to make sure that the contract is drafted with your interests in mind. Um, and when you have a lawyer drafting the contract for you or reviewing a contract that another lawyer has prepared, you know that that lawyer's only job and only goal is to protect you and your interest. You are never going to get that with a standard contract. And the second primary issue with standard contracts are <clears throat> they are going to include many different provisions and terms that do not apply or are not relevant to your situation or your transaction. They're standard contracts, so they throw everything in there um, possible to try to cover any possible scenario, whether that scenario is present in your transaction or not. Standard contracts also likely are not going to be able to cover every single possibility and issue that may arise in your transaction because they're standard contracts. You can't possibly cover every possible scenario that could arise in a real estate transaction. And why this is dangerous or why this is not ideal is because it, both of these things create ambiguities. Having provisions in a contract that do not apply to your transaction creates ambiguity. Also, having a contract that, that does not cover a potential issue that you're dealing with in your transaction is going to create ambiguities. And the ambiguity is what happens when we're faced with this issue or this decision. How do we move forward? One party is going to move, want to move forward one way, and the other party is going to want to move forward a different way. That's why the contract needs to dictate exactly how we move forward. Without that, that is a recipe for a dispute and a recipe for a potential lawsuit, which the whole goal of the contract is to identify the party's agreement, put it in writing and make sure it is clear and unambiguous so that there is no room for a dispute or uh, any sort of litigation down the road. So in general terms, generally speaking, that is my concern with clients using or anybody using standard form contracts. They are not sufficient in most cases. My one caveat or exception to that would be the FAR bar contracts. Um, in a lot of cases, you do need proper addenda to make sure that we are covering every scenario in your specific transaction. Um, but for the most part, I'm okay with using those. In any other situation, my recommendation would be to have a professionally drafted custom contract for your situation and to protect your interests. So that was a great question. I actually get that question a lot, and so I wanted to go ahead and make sure that I address that in case anybody had the same question. Um, with that, again, go ahead and say hello in the comments if you are joining us today. 
Um, make sure to put any questions that you have in the comments. I would be happy to answer those live. I will also go ahead and mention that um, all of these Legal Lounge episodes, in addition to all other video content that we create, um, is reposted on our YouTube channel. So if you miss an episode or there's a topic that you're particularly interested in or maybe comes up down the road, be sure to check out these replays on our YouTube channel. All of that information is, and content is posted for you there. Um, not seeing any questions in the comments. I had one more question submitted to me. Um, it was actually early this morning, so I will go ahead and address that. And if I have no questions in the comments, um, after that one, we'll go ahead and wrap it up for today. Um, but the question, and I'll just go ahead and read it from the email mail here, is this person is asking, my father is aging and not making the best decisions when it comes to his property and finances. <clears throat> what can I do so that he cannot sign his property away without telling anyone or to stop him from making poor decisions with his property? So this question or this scenario comes up a lot and um, we are to kind of limit my answer because this kind of opens a whole a whole rabbit hole but um, we are talking about a person who has their mental competence is mentally c capable and has the capacity to manage their own affairs to sign legal documents um, that is the type of person we're talking about um, in this context for purposes of this answer so the best alternative that I can provide is going to be a trust and the reason for that is the trust allows the owner this aging father in this in this particular example to maintain the the benefit of the property but it also kind of puts a second line of defense or um, a, a little checkpoint in in the event this person wanted to sell their property or lease it out or give it away to somebody whatever the case may be and so what we can do is we can put the property into a trust we can make the owner um, the father in this case a trustee we can also make the daughter who is who submitted the question in this situation a co-trustee and what that means is that anytime the property is sold leased gifted whatever the case may be both trustees both co-trustees must sign off so this prevents the father from giving away the property selling the property um, doing something that would not be beneficial to him without having that co-trustee signing off and the co-trustee obviously should be somebody with the father's best interest in mind um, who is just looking out for him and making sure that he is um, acting in the way that is going to benefit him and his lifestyle and so what I would not recommend is adding an adult child onto the deed um, that opens up a whole host of potential issues for both parties. Um, a trust is going to be the cleanest way to accomplish that. So the takeaway here is a trust will allow the father to um, retain the benefit of the property. The father is relinquishing some control because now you need the signatures of both the father and their co-trustee, in this case his daughter before he can do anything with the property um, as far as deeding it or, or leasing it out. Um, but that will put in place the proper protection um, to make sure there's kind of a second set of eyes being, um, being placed on any proposed transaction. So thank you for those who have submitted questions throughout the week. Um, feel free to submit the questions that you have anytime. I will save them and make sure to address them on our weekly Legal Lounge episodes. Um, thank you all who have joined me today. Make sure to go ahead and like and share this video. Um, my goal is obviously to educate and to provide valuable content, so you liking and sharing um, our content helps others to be able to see it and be able to benefit from it as well. Um, again, thank you. I hope you are having a great start to your week. Hope you have a great and productive rest of your week. We will be back here next Monday, same time, same place, right here on Facebook Live, and I hope to see you then.